Hey everybody, welcome back to the Build Show. Steve Basic here. I'm out on the vineyard. We're touring the passive house out there. You can see that we're in the framing stage. But today I wanted to talk about an air barrier transition. And how do we transition from the wall to the ceiling and create our continuity amongst our air barrier? In this case here, we have a double wall assembly the double wall assembly is sheathed with a zip sheathing on the outside, which is our weather resistant barrier, but it's also my primary air barrier. Now, that primary air barrier is gonna rise up through the outside wall. It's a pretty simple one to, to handle. We take the joints, we seal it at the bottom, we seal it at the top, we get a nice wrap on the house of our air barrier. But what happens at the top plate and how do we transition that to what our air barrier is in the ceiling? This section of the house is a single story, so we basically have the top of our air barrier right here above me. You can see that here Farley chose to, we go up the wall with the zip wall, and then we transition across the top of the wall with this 16 inch piece that gives us a little flange there that we can then attach to, right? So now our air barrier goes up, it comes across those top plates, and then basically we can take zip off the zip sheathing and we can run it along the bottom of the trusses here and create that continuity of our air barrier. Now you see here that if we have zip sheathing there, we don't have it here. Well, the reason is, is we leave that access so that the plumbers, the electricians and all the utility guys can get up there and get access to it. And then we'll continue and fill in the zip wall here but you notice that it's all filled in everywhere where we have interior partitions. So we don't have to worry about that later. And that the plumber, electrician, they can run their wires, run their plumbing up through those systems and basically seal it off. And then we'll come back in and Farley and his guys will fill in the field of the uh, air barrier up there. Let's jump back to the studio. I'll pull out some drawings. We'll talk about air barrier continuity there. We'll talk about how we brought it up the wall. We'll bring it over the top. Big Red will join in, help us out with the explanation, and uh, we'll get a little bit smarter about air barriers today. I'll see you back at the studio. All right, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed that trip out to uh, Martha's Vineyard. Always a treat to go out there. Farley's doing a heck of a job. We got our passive house happening out there. Uh, really slick detail. Um, you know, Farley chose to take the zip sheathing not only up the wall as the primary air barrier, but turning that corner and uh, making it the uh, primary air barrier, bar air barrier in the ceiling assembly. So without further uh, hesitation, let's jump into a detail. Let's grab our good friend. Let's take a look at that detail in uh, detail. All right. So got big red. We broke out one of the details here. Stripped all the notes off of it for clarity. Um, let's give you a uh, little bit of location here. So you can see the truss here happening. The bottom cord of the truss happening along here. Basically the rough frame of the roof. So we have our soffit out here. It's a ventilated soffit. Some spaces through those boards where we put a screen on the back side before we install them. You can see up here, we have our vented air space that goes up. I like to keep that probably somewhere around 16 inches above the insulation just so that when the guys are blowing in the insulation, we're not at a risk of blowing it down that space, say if we cut it here. So I'd like to extend that up a little bit. Notice that, you know, we use vent chutes that come down and fold around and staple off so they fully encapsulate that outside. We have our solid blocking here that keeps the trusses from rolling. But as you saw in the video, what we're really talking about here is air barrier continuity. And, uh, you know, you, you've seen me draw this detail. I've done some videos on it, but this one here is a slightly different take. Um, this is Farley's personal house. Farley's the builder. And so 
a lot of times builders, they like to go maybe a little further than they would for uh, one of their clients and uh, make sure that they're getting it the way they want it. So you can see here, we have a double stud wall. If you missed that video, that was one of the previous videos that we just talked about. So go back and check that out. Two by six wall, two by four wall here on the inside. Right. And we have zip sheathing on the outside here. So that's our air barrier on the outside. And then the question is, we need to get some type of air barrier across the ceiling. This, In this case here, most of these rooms were flat ceilings. We do have some volume ceilings in there, but if, for the most part, they're flat. And so we need to be able to go from the vertical orientation to the horizontal orientation and maintain that continuity. So you saw in the video, there were some areas where Farley would run zip and they would run it out over the top of the double stud wall, which is good because we need to close this off as a fire stop, right? We can't allow the double stud cavity to communicate with the truss cavity. So the fire department wants closure on that. So we get that closure, but by simply extending that flange, you know, upwards of another four inches. So that gives us 16 inches here, which three times 16 is 48, so it's not just a coincidence that we hit 48 inches, which is the width of a sheet. So we get basically three rips out of that. We get the four inch flange. And then what happens is <clears throat> we simply tape the outside here and we fold it over the top. And what that basically does is it connects the exterior zip sheathing to that zip half inch zip flange there. So now we've maintained continuity across that corner. Now there's every eight feet, we're gonna have a joint here. So we need to make sure that that gets taped, right? And sealed to the end there. And then the question is, well, where do we go from there? A lot of times you've seen me just come in with drywall, but Farley did something a little different here. He's gonna finish the ceiling with zip sheathing. And so he'll run that half inch zip sheathing across and at that joint, he'll simply tape it with zip tape. So what he's effectively doing is the same primary air barrier that we've built outside with the zip sheathing and taping all the joints and rolling all of the tape. Well, he's taking that system and just simply applied it to his ceiling. And so that, you know, Every eight feet or so, we'll, we'll have that tape joint for the zip sheathing, and that'll fly across the ceiling. So we get that nice, let's call it green box enclosure, but we're ensured that, remember when we're talking about air tightness, what we're trying to understand is what is inside and what is outside. All right? It's that simple. What is inside? What is outside? There's no gray area when it comes to air barrier. You're either in or you're out. You're on the conditioned side of the air barrier or you're on the unconditioned side of the air barrier. There is no kind of when it comes to air barriers, in or out. So by bringing this up, folding it over, taping that joint, taping those eight foot joints, running that flange long by four inches and then extending that zip wall and simply taping it, we've taken a tried and true system and we just simply applied it to the ceiling. And then we'll insulate with our 24 inches of cellulose over the top. We got our vented ceiling there. So everything's working really well for us. We're drying to the outside with our vapor. And then the last task at hand, you can see here, Farley's gonna come back He's going to run a bunch of two by fours at 16 inches on center as furring and then hang the drywall down below that. So we're going to get that inch and a half gap. Now that inch and a half gap allows us to get things like smoke detectors, recessed lights, all of that good stuff packed in that 
inch and a half, right? And the beauty of that is any holes we make in this drywall are inside our air barrier. Because just like here, we have outside, inside, this being our air barrier here along the ceiling, that zip, this is inside, this is outside. Clearly delineated, simple, tried, and true. So any holes we now cut to retrofit anything in that ceiling, as long as we maintain the integrity of that zip across the ceiling, we've maintained our air barrier continuity across that system. And we've developed what is inside and what is outside. I know I harp on these two words, but I can't tell you how many buildings I go in and I ask myself, is the space I'm in inside or outside? And my answer is, I'm not quite sure. I don't know. So, so there you have it. And, you know, this house here will, uh, I'm assuming it's going to meet the passive house air tightness of 0.6 um, air changes at 50 pascals or better. I mean, Farley's really good at it. So, you know, the last house I did with him, we were at, uh, I don't know, something like 0.37. So it's usually not a challenge for him to uh, get under that 0.6. And uh, he's making it nice and easy, creating these raceways for his electrician to get all the stuff in there. Um, any plumbing vents or anything that does breach that air barrier will be effectively sealed on both sides. And uh, given that hard um, lid of zip, it's going to be very easy to make that sealed connection there, whether it's a piece of stretch tape or expanding foam or sealant. Uh, it's going to be a pretty easy connection. So anyways. That's the detail. That's how we're making it happen out there. That's how we keep it simple. That's how we understand inside versus outside. And until next time. Right. I'm not saying it tonight. No poetry. You don't get it. Not deserved tonight. In a grumpy mood, you don't get it. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that. It's uh, just a slightly different take on a detail that I love to use. Um, it's really simple. We get that closure on the double wall system. Fire department's really happy. Building inspector's really happy. Uh, passive house people are really happy. We get that flange coming over the top. We get some really good air tightness. Electrician's really happy because he runs everything inside the air barrier now. So it's, uh, it's a major win for everybody. So hope you enjoyed that video. If you want more, go check out all those previous videos that I did. Um, like I said, science says six to eight times before you can fully capture the content of a video. Um, when you're done with mine, go check out Matt, Jake, Wade, and Brent. Those guys are doing a fantastic job providing content. Look forward to their stuff every week. If you want more of me, certainly you can find me on Instagram, Steve Basic Architect. I'm putting up details like this in my travels and my projects uh, daily. So always something good there. People like to comment on it. Sometimes we get uh, we go a little rogue in our discussions, but hey, we reel it back in and uh, we all learn from it. Um, follow my daughter, Alexandra Bazek. She works with me. She's also on Instagram. She's posting some really good stuff too. She's having a lot of fun um, learning. I'm having a lot of fun uh, sharing some knowledge with her, <clears throat> and then. Lastly, of course, Unbuild It Podcast. Catch Peter Yost and uh, Jake Bruton and myself every other Thursday as we break down and unbuild some complex building science um, concepts. And uh, we use our experience between the three of us, building scientist, architect, and builder. We get three different perspectives and a whole lot of years of experience. And... Uh, break that information down and hopefully uh, we all learn something from that. So anyways, that's it. I'm signing off from the Build Show Network. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Until next time, long live our buildings. Mm -hmm.